Just if you're feeling anyone confident. Join me. How about the two of us investigate the disturbance up front, and once our friends here make a move, we will be one step ahead of them already. Of course. Now, I'm Sorry. actually going to reveal the battle map a little bit earlier for you folks. You may copy your tokens and uh, begin transitioning to the new map. The basic battle? Yes, the basic battle map. Right. right. Okay, well, obviously we need to make it look as if uh, they're not there, but uh, I'll keep my weapons concealed. Uh, you can, well, <laughs> you can do what you like. I'll make it look as if I'm quite armless. <laughs> And you will be traveling from the uh, the bottom left corner of the map, and you may position yourselves however you'd like. Well, let's start by being here. As I assume, we sort of walk, probably looking towards the spider and the corpse on the ground, yes. leaving the wagon behind a little, as if we have not noticed the humanoids, but are sort of curious as to what this is. Right. That's... Assuming what they would expect us to do. Okay. I'm going to, as Tempest is starting to walk, he's specifically going to look. Anything, as in, obviously there is a, maybe a twitching spider. There's five humanoids around. He's actually looking for any traps, wires, nets, things like that, that might either hamper or surprise us as well in addition to this. All right. The background he's going to use is a survivor of the Dwarven games where he had to improvise on the fly to deal with sudden spikes jutting out and sudden boiling acid and oils. You may make a wisdom-based skill check using that background. Okay. That's... So that's my level as well? Yes. 1d20 plus your level plus your wisdom modifier plus your background. Okay, uh, Tempest doesn't think there are any traps beyond the uh, presumed ambush here. Okay. Before going to investigate the corpses and the spider, Thomas would have whispered to the more ranged party members, just attack once we're halfway there. I think you've spotted them. If we attack first, we have the advantage. Of course. And then, I suppose he and Tempest would slowly, ever so curiously, walk towards the and pile while of While doing it, I'm going to explain a story of how some spiders, they, they like to digest things and make it look interesting. This could be fascinating. Something this big? Ha <laughs> ha! It's an exploring adventure. And he makes sure it's loud in an attempt to sort of distract it, make sure it's obvious he doesn't know things is happening. He's a bit of a I, loud know? mouth. I like that. Why don't you give me a charisma-based skill check using one of your backgrounds that you think is relevant? Okay. He's going to be a trickster of the dice. He's known how to distract people. He's known how to take people's money, make sure they actually look where he wants them to look, distract them so they don't see his hands, see him slip those uh, little tidbits out of their corner, their hands, their belts, their money pouches. He knows the gift of the gab. He knows how to distract them and how to sway them. Okay. Make that skill check using that background. Charisma, yeah? Yes. Alright, 1d20 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5. Oh. All of you player characters, this if you did not know the exact ramifications of the situation, you'd probably be convinced about this yarn that Tempest is telling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not time. Okay. Thomas will certainly look the part. He knows how to listen without actually listening, so he can still look around. It's it's worth noting that uh, the the uh, humanoids that you've spotted are uh, in this grid, this grid, and this grid, where I've laid down the tags. As such, in order to be far away to target them, any ranged characters would have to be in this square. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I'm good. I can move forward once things begin. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to remind the situation. Yeah, and okay. it's it's also worth noting, due to the incredible perceptiveness of the situation, any person who is off the road and in the thick cover of the forest uh, to attack them with a ranged attack, you will suffer a minus two penalty. The forest fine, cover right? is that good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, so that wouldn't count because this one's mostly covered by a road. You'd have to be, like, here Damn it. or here. <laughs> That's kind of inconspicuous if we begin to wander into the forest. Yes. 
Yeah. I'm a druid. I like the trees. Da, 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 da. Yeah, oh, right oh look at that plant over there. <laughs> <laughs> but he wants to be in range for to the two fighters once uh, battle commences. All right. Uh, Tempest will just sort of yell back towards uh, Fargus along the lines of, "Do you have any ideas, spiders? This thing looks magnificent. I mean, surely you've had an idea." Trying to kind of bluff over the fact that he's walking towards could, them uh, to, to keep him could, okay. Could, so I, he's engaged. I have it. seen a lot of spiders in my days, but not one of this size, I must say. Does uh, Does Torhurum think that while the spider is playing dead here, not knowing that he's looking at it, do you, does he think that he would have an easier time targeting it with a spell? Uh, Surprise attacking it. Uh, doing that would uh would certainly start initiative, but uh, to start yeah. initiative right now would actually count as a surprise round. Uh, and I'll go ahead and explain the surprise round mechanics. Thirteenth uh, Age doesn't operate on like one side getting a full round of turns. Instead, the player characters nominate one person who gets to act during the surprise round, and then they all roll initiative, and the person with the highest initiative who wasn't selected also gets to act. So, uh, one person nominated by the group gets to act, and the highest initiative who isn't that person all gets, also gets yeah. to act during the surprise round. The same yeah. also applies to enemies. So, if the enemies had successfully ambushed you here, Team NPC would have nominated a person and rolled for initiative and selected a highest person. Yeah. So, uh, if you were to do that, you would start off a surprise situation. The spider is clearly just fucking laying prone there. Yeah. As part of I wouldn't actually get an, an, an offensive ability, like... Bonus because it's just I, laying there. I would say that you would get a plus two to your attack roll. Mm. One of us has to initiate because you know Jorhirim would really like to just you. like throw an acid arrow in the face of that thing <laughs> and just like empower it as an arrow, get it out of the way. He's like he hate the like this is like his forest monster and it should die and be dead right. forever. I and, could also uh, cast the uh, strength first to give you a plus four to your attack roll. I, but isn't that a daily thing? It is. A yeah, daily. it is. Yeah, I seems don't like know. this fight no. might be hard though. Because if I empower my thing, if I hit, I most likely will kill it. Oh, okay. Uh, which I suppose it fits with his character. That as the others going here, he sort of mumbles that this is probably you know, like we you know this is far enough, and then he will uh, I guess initiate the combat by using an empowered okay uh, acid arrow. So let's see if my to hit thing works. It doesn't. How can I make it ask me how much bonus I want to add? Uh, you just, uh, in the brackets, you add plus, like X, for example, and then you will get a pop up. All right. In the brackets. That's what I want. So you rolled a 16 on that d20 then? Yes. And yeah, then plus you one, and then like plus four, plus, 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 plus my one. So plus four, plus two, plus one. Okay. That's plus seven. Yes. For physical defense. Okay. Probably eight. And uh, you uh, chose to use evocation on this, right? Yes. So uh, you've evoked the spell. It'll deal 40 damage. That certainly hits. And the spider will uh, cry out in size and alarm. Surprise and alarm. You can go ahead and describe how that happens. All right. Well, uh, sort of walking a little slowly with his sort of walking stick, looking forward. You know, he, he seems very grumpy as he looks at all these trees. And, and green things, and, and, you know, just sort of his eyes fill with this smoldering hatred for it, for it all, and he just sort of suddenly, like, lets out an annoyed sort of grunt, almost as if he doesn't care for this kind of, of pussyfooting about this monster, and just sort of raises his staff, swings it about once in the air, uh, hits down into the ground, and uh, and from it just wells this this mass of of almost sort of boiling looks not really green it's more like a like molten glass between his hands that he then simply takes in both hands and then then hurls at this spider that's just hit with it like it holes in it just begin begin opening as it just corroses its way through the exoskeleton spilling out all the all the spider juices everywhere okay Manakai has chosen himself to act here. Uh, the only other person who can act during the surprise round will be chosen by initiative. So, all of you roll initiative. Uh -huh. I, will, uh, I suppose I don't have to. Do I? You do as well, since uh, this right. will matter for the result. Uh, let me go ahead Ooh. and uh, remove duplicates. 
Uh, a question here. I have two things affecting my initiative. I have the human thing of rolling twice and taking the better result. Yeah. yeah. And one of my commander class talents that I chose also lets me uh, take a re-roll on the initiative. Okay. Uh, okay. The re-roll, I assume, would only be one extra d20 and not the 2d20 drop lowest, I assume. Which of your, uh, which of your uh, talents as a commander allows you to... Uh... That is the tactician talent, which What's both that? lets me use wisdom instead of charisma and gives me a re-roll on initi initiative once what, per day. One battle per day, you can re-roll your initiative. You don't like the first result. Uh, you know, I would say that since you're a human, that would actually allow you to re-roll re -roll both dice. Okay, then I will use that because I might as well. Well, you re-roll when you're not happy with, so you roll first, then roll. Yeah, I, I rolled an 8 as my first thing. And that's an 18, that's better. Okay. You should folks be able to uh, edit your uh, initiative results in the uh, in the initiative tracker. If so, I guess I'm first. So, you would be the only other person who's able to act the surprise round, yes. Okay. Also, since I rolled my relationship so high, I get six extra command points for this uh, this <laughs> game session. Jesus. <laughs> Yes. Quite You're a nice command number. So yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and sort that. Yes, Tempest. You are the only person, other person who gets to act the surprise round. Okay. So pile myself in for the three, or pile myself in for the one. Hmm. Well, I'm Malay. It's going to be more over here. These two. Are, hmm. Probably going to be worse. Yeah, I'm going to go for the three, because at least you know they're. More I numerous. Mean, uh, I mean, there's three melee fighters here and two archers. All in the trees, but. Yep. Go yeah. for it. So, we're going to move over here. Okay. As part of my movement. Uh, I guess I'm going to try and see if I can spot anything as I'm running towards the shadow. Sure, I'll Human go ahead and make them visible. Well, hey! You guys look Oh, evil. boy. Yes. So square borders. Uh, they, they, that is a mob of mooks. Okay, good. All right. Uh, ah. In that case, I'm going to take the negative two, and I guess while running, I was I built the contraption in my wrist both to fire okay. at uh, one of the mooks, which I know is all together. But let's just say it's the closest one ish. I know they're all in the same tile. All right. All right. So. Okay, that is enough to hit. You managed to kill one of them and damage a third with that uh, with that bolt. I guess a second, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Wow, all right, I'm happy with that. And I get momentum, yay! Okay. I will now go ahead and reveal the other players, or the other NPCs, as uh, combat will kick off proper and roll for their initiative counts as well. And so now we just go from usual initiative. Yes. Almost, right? It seems that uh, it seems that That's the uh, right. luck is very much with the PCs today. <laughs> Tempest acts again. These uh, creatures that you see before you are humanoids who have long limbs and small torsos. Uh, they, uh, they were standing, uh, they were like dropped down into spider crawls, uh, but uh, leap up in alarm as you uh, rush towards them and fire. They have expressive faces, but with jaws that open like mandibles. These two are wielding basically like athames. I did wonder if I would have got my sneak attack damage on that one because it was a surprise round, though. But uh, I, uh, I'm gonna make this. Let's make this one interesting. Okay, I'm going to engage with the middle mook. Okay, well, the left mook. So that's the movement. The standard uh, is going to be. Yeah, I, mean, I just need to double check these so I'm not, you know, hitting the wrong one. Sure. And I am going to do an evasive strike. All right. And let's go. So that's the evasive strike. So roll 1d20 plus 5 plus 1. That is a hit. 
So 1d8 plus 5. Okay. That is enough to kill the one with whom you are engaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, severely injure the uh, last remaining mook in this mob. And uh, I'll pop three of the target. Okay. <laughs> pop. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> All right, that's that's Tempest's turn. Leon, you're up. Leon, seeing that things have got started a little quicker than he thought it would, um, moves up to here, right. and as then go as then draw, you know, he draw, drawing in one, one into each hand, his blade into one hand, his hand crossbow into the other. As uh, as you almost like small sparks of energy will form as he's going to throw a chaos bolt at the mook. All right, that'll be at a minus two penalty due to its forest cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I, I think that's right. 16 versus his physical defense. That is enough to hit the mook. Very well. He will take... Nine points of... Um, negative energy damage. That is enough to kill the mook. That mob has been defeated. Very well. Le you know, as Leon rushes rushes forward, he aim he aims his hand crossbow to towards the acolyte. But, but as as he aims forward, um, you see you see dark motes of energy kind of spark up from just around around his skin and something that's clearly not entirely right. Yeah, the energies are very unnerving, but. As, but as it seems to fire out of his crossbow, almost like a bolt would. Slightly curving and sm smashing into him, corrupting his flesh and turning it black as he fa falls to the ground. All right, you other two casters who are in the party, since you're near close proximity to Leon, you can feel waves of uh, negative energy, uh, necrosis radiating from Leon, almost as if it has a necromantic feel to the casting. I don't approve. Turns quickly to to sort of prepare another acid arrow, thinking that there might be something he missed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a move and a standard action. Then uh, looks like Leon is done for the turn. Yep. Moving on to Fargus. All right, if I stand over here, I can still target this guy, right? Yes. With a uh, long range spell. All right. Yes. So. Uh, Fargus will step further into the forest, uh, right. sort of to get away from Leon and uh, hmm. more into cover. And uh, then he will point his spear at the um, abomination over there, and uh, electricity will start uh, forming through the ground, through his body, and then out, out the spear. All right, this is a minus two uh, uh, penalty to your attack roll due to his uh, cover. Yep. Fourteen is not. Excuse me, I take that back. Fourteen <laughs> is enough to hit the other cap hunter. Hooray! As a bolt of lightning streaks from your uh, staff, uh, does not stagger the hunter. He looks pissed. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you, I mean, it's not as if you've seen a whole lot of pissed, edder cap looking things in your day, but boy, boy, does he look mad. Uh, I've seen a lot of creatures and animals and such. That's and right. That's I can right. probably tell. <laughs> That's right. It hisses at you as blood oozes from its body. Thomas, your turn. Oh, well, Thomas is going to move over here All right. and basically just weigh the odds, mechanically speaking, which means that he will not take any offensive action right now, but rather he takes the time to position himself in the most optimal way to stand between like the, the spider thing and his allies as well as also shouting out like their positions and where he thinks that the other the other party members might be best able to attack them. All right. Mechanically speaking, that gives him four command points. And those uh, those command points just last for this battle, or do those last throughout the those entire... Those only last for this battle. Okay. Do we'll hear him's turn? All right. The idea of cover seems to be a good one. <clears throat> because that seems to have a bow with that thing over there. Uh, and since it's in forest, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just, ask, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just, just sort of <clears throat> look at the hunter, begin weaving his, his spell, you know, moving his hands, and basically begin to dismantle its, its skin. Not really, 
sort of uh, attacking it particularly, but just almost dismantling it from the outside. Okay. That, uh, those acts there by Dwohiram are enough to stagger the Ettercap Hunter. As he removes parts of its skin and tissue. The, uh, Ettercap Hunter, actually, after that, loses some of the anger that he had at Fargus, appears to reassess the situation, yeah. and books it. <laughs> the, the, uh, the drow archer who stood up... <laughs> Looks around a bit nervously and then joins the Ettercap Hunter and flees. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> nice work. Escalation die is unnecessary. Cursed elves. Uh, yeah. That was a draw, if I'm not mistaken. That was, in fact, a one of the dark elves, yes. <clears throat> a lawful servant of the Elf Queen, I know. Are they common in this forest? Um, These shrugs. Uh, mechanically speaking, uh, dark elves could travel just about anywhere. They might like the same is true with any other race. Uh, for more information about Ettercapped, though, you would have to make an intelligence-based skill check with some sort of uh, knowledge-type situation that might recount lore about yes. the Ettercaps. Um, Leon would like to certainly have a look at these, um, try and work out what these are. All right. Uh, so would Fargus, actually. Unless um, they are made from, from processed wood, Thomas doesn't have anything. You know, because um, Leon, <laughs> Leon has spent a lot of time delving through old tomes and various books about... Law, which is um, quite a bit, quite a bit on the not so nice side, you know, what during his time in the Order of the Twilight Cross. So, you know, he you know, maybe he'd read up on these at some point. All right, that's a sufficient background, Fargus. Uh, Fargus has uh, spent uh, many many years in uh, the forest, and he will sort of try to recount if he have encountered anything like this in his travels. All right, you can use that background. Right. Let's see, what's that? Er. Plus ten. All right. So, uh, speaking together, both Leon and Fargus, and perhaps individually, uh, recognize that Ettercaps, um, they are humanoids who do exhibit spider-like tendencies, and uh, they are covered in uh, matting and webbing. Uh, which is basically what accounts for clothes for them. They don't have anything of worth that they're carrying, these acolytes, other than those sacrificial daggers, which are pretty, pretty weak. Um, Ettercaps all worship the same evil god. They dare not speak her name, but she is most commonly known as she who spins in darkness. The Ettercaps drape her temples in spider motif, and instead of prayer and offerings, they bring her that which she truly desires. Secrets. Whispering a secret to the altar is the most holy act an Ettercap can perform. It's their prayer language. And their fanes are said to be filled with silence, like the ocean is filled with water. Now, Leon, you have another connection here. Because uh, as you study these creatures, you do recall that... Um, the priestess despises Ettercaps. They are a bestial perversion of the clerics and paladins who do her work for the gods of light. Ettercaps sometimes build fanes in cities and urban areas where the light can't reach and prey upon the desperate souls lying in the gutters and huddling within the sewers. Liam will look quite dis disgusted in that case after recalling all that knowledge. Uh, Dirk will pull like his wagon up and like uh, calm the horses uh, next to the hero and say, "Everything all right out there?" Yes, I think they ran. They do not think they could take us after what we showed them. Is the wagon all right? Are you all right? Okay. He will. Uh, he will say, "Yeah, good work." 
I knew you men were the dependable sort. And I want you folks to no longer move, because you catch the blur of an arrow as it flies past Dirk's head and embeds itself within the covered wagon. Damn it, not again! He ducks. Turning your heads, you spot another group of enemies, quickly closing in on your positions, enough to warrant another initiative. It oh seems God. that the folks who were injured have come <laughs> back with reinforcements. <laughs> Damn it, and I was oh, please do. Oh. Basically, yep. just as the arrow came flying, Thomas was to say, we should keep moving before. <laughs> <laughs> I want all of Damn, you to roll, to roll initiative again. All right. And I should have added the PCs before I... Uh, Made that remove token, remove token. Go ahead and uh, edit your uh, initiative values. Go ahead. Just and... as I was about to be helpful and move the spider. This counts as another battle, then. Yes, this counts as another battle. So you could use yeah. evocation again. Uh, I'll go ahead and roll once for the acolytes. Acolytes do absolutely rubbish. <laughs> uh, the hunters are special enough that they will get uh, two initiative rolls. Also rubbish, and the archers, for they are different, will also get two initiative rolls. Okay. Good job, Team NPC. You're doing God's work here. Failures, nah. every single one of you. Add the escalation die to the bottom. It's and, all these humans. And we start with <laughs> Fargus. Well. You got friends nearby? Sure, by enough. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anciently Far Away. You know, I'd be happy with some... Yeah, I don't know. You know, I could move over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can we that. are no you, shields for the you, dwarf. We can, we can do a thing together. <laughs> Moving there would lose you the ranged cover that the forest provides. Really? Yes. That, uh, that tile contains road. Okay. As such, the forest line is not thick enough. If you want, does you can go here. Not... Right. <laughs> this, this tile would be sufficient. It does not yeah, contain right. any road. Then, then Hurem and Le Leon are both close. Yeah. I do have the second best defenses in the uh, group, though. Uh, I think you'll not probably be fine. They're probably going to shoot at me before they shoot at you, honestly. Well, I'm also <laughs> this one away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm far enough. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm far enough. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a good idea to cast Earth Strength in this moment, actually. So I'm gonna move here and cast Earth Strength, targeting uh, uh, Herm as the uh, first target. All right. And to, as a reminder, that this was Earth Strength Duffs, and then I will roll a random die. Uh, D3. One. Uh, 1d3, right? Yeah, uh, Dirk doesn't one being count. Tempest, uh, <laughs> <laughs> one, <laughs> one being Tempest, two being Thomas, and three being Leon. <laughs> okay. All right. Three. So Leon gets a plus four too. Both. Excellent! All right. Hiram and Leon have been infused with the powers of the Earth itself. Yeah. Uh, sort of... Um, Small lights uh, shoot out from the ground under you and start encircling you, filling you with uh, determination and strength. Little wisps. Yeah. All right. Tempest, it's your turn. You have a lot more friends to party with. Well, this group's much closer to Leon, so I imagine this is going to be a target for Leon. All right. I could go over and soften them up for you, because I don't think you can kill two different targets. I can deal some damage, but I definitely probably can't kill. Yes, them. these Not are with these, that these are <laughs> these are two mobs of three mooks each. Yeah, you might also want to have fun with those archers. I have a feeling they're not going to be as fun. Like in, they're not going to be as good in, in melee as in ranged. So keep in mind that the NPCs get the same intercept rules that you get. Yeah, yeah. So we might want to get rid of those things protecting them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. So it's, I'm trying to think which, which group to go for. I mean, there's always a perceptive. This gives you cover. <laughs> yeah, but I could, the most I can do is I can go here and then shoot. Or you could you double move to a situation. Otherwise, you might not be able to stop them from moving. 
Uh, I guess I could move and not engage, but that just risks a lot of things then. Well, you always... I think yeah. move and shoot is fine. Oh, I could move here. Yeah, that's Yeah, thing. you could move there. That way, uh, I don't know. No matter yes. what, you can intercept someone. All right, I'll move here. And let's... How big and nasty is that looking compared to these tiny ones? Oh, he... He isn't even wielding a dagger. His teeth... <laughs> His, like, spider-like mandibles, like, sort of like, almost like a mind flare type thing where protrusions extend from the, from the jaw, looks pretty damn scary, all things considered. Gonna shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> he is a um, hulking beast of sinew and pain, and that <laughs> will hit him. Despite the, uh, the penalty, that's six points of damage. Not enough to even closely stagger him, but at least it's something. Yes. Leon, and you're up. Unless you had... Yes, your momentum. Jazz hands. Momentum! <laughs> <laughs> in, in 